Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of your favorite Lone Speed program, my favorite Lone Speed program too, Pull Out Your PPs. Uh, that's what I want you to do right now. And all of you to just reach down deep, pull out those PPs, show them to me. I'm going to show you mine and together we're going to go over this late pick five at Churchill Downs on Saturday, Derby Day, starting with race 10, ending with the Kentucky Derby. I put together I'll be honest, it's kind of an expensive ticket, uh, at least for me it's kind of expensive, um, and it's not going to shock me, it's not impossible that I could go 0 for 5. Uh, you know, there are some good horses that I left off here, just because I don't want to spend, you know, $10,000 trying to hit this, uh, so take this advice uh, for, for what it is, it's my best guess, I did, you know, handicapped, I think I put together a creative ticket, giving us a chance to uh, cover as many of the logical horses as possible while I try to include some price plays if we can. I went three deep in the opening leg here, starting with number three, Super Stock for Steve Asterson. Santana picks up the mount. Uh, this is you know the one-turn mile. I like horses that were close to the pace in a sprint and won. This one figures to be part of it early. Number four, Ultimate Badger for Dale Romans. Was bet to almost 7-2 to two in the career debut against seven opponents at Ellis. Caught a muddy track, one by four. Maybe this one won because it was muddy track, or maybe this one would have run bigger on a on a fast track you don't really know 12 to 1 i'll take my chances there i kind of doubt we get 12 to 1 here but um i used ultimate badger and then of course i used the logical number 10 the ride of a lifetime figures to be a single on many people's tickets and this one's not that creative uh definitely the most likely winner of the race so it's three deep in the opening leg three four ten moving on to race number 11, the Churchill Distaff Turf Mile Stakes, one mile on the turf for four-year-old Phillies, and up four, Phillies four years old and up, and I went four deep in here. Uh, at one point, I was using the all button. At another point, I was singling newspaper of record. So you can see I was kind of all over the place and sort of split it down the middle going four deep, starting with number two, Daddy is a Legend. Um, hasn't done that great in two prior starts at Churchill Downs. Isn't even necessarily known for being a miler. But Florent Drew picks up the mount. This one's got some back class. I just used it because there are some horses in here that don't quite, you know, don't appear to be quite at the class level. And uh, you know, there's a chance that Newspaper of Record gets run into the ground early by Juliet Foxtrot, and I used her and Newspaper of Record. Um, again, these two figure to be, you know, keeping each other honest early. If you notice. Um, Newspaper of record. It's it's hard to say why she lost those races. I mean, she she ran second a, a couple of times there uh, to start the the the, the three year old season, but she was on the lead, and then they tried to take her back in the in the Belmont Oaks, and that didn't work. And since she's come back, you know, she's been straight to the front each time, and I, I you got to think that's what they're going to try to do with her again today. And Juliet Foxtrot, Juliet Foxtrot will I think be there to keep her honest, and she's pretty good in her own right. So I could see a scenario where. Maybe the three gets the edge. Um, if you think it's going to come down to a closer because the, 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 the speed horses run each other into the ground, then um, I think maybe you have to include Bo Recall in here. She's got to win at Churchill Downs. She's decent at the distance. And I, I do think she's one of the ones that's going to be closing late. If I had to single, I, I guess it'd be newspaper of record, but I don't have to single. So I went four deep. And you can, you can really make a case for a number of others in here. Like I said, at one point I was going to use the all button and then the ticket just got too expensive. So I would rate my degree of confidence at getting through this leg at somewhere around, say, 75%. Uh, I'm not supremely confident. Let's move on to race number 12, the Derby City Distaff Stakes at seven furlongs on the dirt for Phillies four years old and up. This is another one where I had no choice but to eliminate some very, very logical horses, starting with the one, Mia Mischief. No doubt she has a chance to, to run big in here. She's very live. I, I didn't include Bell's the one. Initially I did and you know just had to make, had make some cuts. Uh, she could actually absolutely win. The, the price horse that I'm using in here is the six, Sally's Curlin. Um, I, I do think that last race at, at Keeneland, the Madison, where she just she didn't get the pace she needed uh, to to close the way she likes to. She's got three wins from six starts at Churchill Downs. We know she can win at seven furlongs. This is a class jump, no doubt. But I just think if they do go quick early up front, I think she's the most likely to try to run them down late. Uh, Serengeti Empress, obviously you're, you you can't exclude her. Um, 
you know, she's she's just at the top of her game, I think, right now. That he, if you want to make a reason, uh, you know, excuse for excluding her, you can maybe say that what she did in the ballerina was just so incredibly impressive. She has to regress, and she does have, maybe have a little bit of a history of regressing after big races, but sometimes there, those were some route races, and maybe routing isn't her best thing. So anyway, I'm including her. The the big exclude for me is Bella Fina. She has lost eight of her last nine, and you know cost me money by not winning the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, and I'm you know I'm not bitter about that you know or anything. I just think you know outside of Santa Anita, she's not at her best. Um, she ran a really big race in the ballerina. Um, you know, she won that grade three desert stormer at Santa Anita back in May. I'm not sure that was the toughest ever. That's her only win in her last nine starts. And at some point you just got to say, look, this one, she's talented, but you know, what, what you, how, how many, how many, how many excuses are we going to give her? And then I'm using CC for sure. I really respect, uh, respect Michael McCarthy and I love horses turning back. She's classy. She's a, a dual grade one winner. Um, Seven furlongs is a new thing for her, but I do like horses turning back, so I'm including her. So we went three deep here, six, eight, and ten. Let's move on to race 13, the third leg of the pick five, the grade one turf classic stakes. I went four deep in here, and I don't think I was that creative. I ended up going with the three Chad Browns. Uh, I thought about singling Rock, Rock Emperor and then decided against it because I wanted to include Digital Age. And then once I got to that point, it was you got to include the other Chad Brown, uh, Sacred Life. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use two Chads and then not use the third. Uh, I think this one's got a realistic chance too. My my clever opinion, if you want to call it clever, and I, I know that in replays they pronounce this one Mr. Dumas. I, I I think it's Mr. Dumas, Alexander Dumas, Count of Monte Cristo. Ever heard of it? Probably not. Um, this one didn't get a chance to run into the pace that. He needs when some like it hot brown won uh, the Bernard Baruch. I don't think some like it hot brown gets that pace today for Mike Maker and Tyler Gaffley. And that one's probably going to have to go a little bit quicker early, and that's not going to be his best game. That might set it up for the other Mike Maker, Mr. Dumas. So uh, also three or four at Churchill Downs. We know that he likes uh, this track. He's won at the distance. I think he's got a really big shot. Uh, to close to close here, and if you go back and look at time form uh, pace projections, you can see that the 97 for Mr. Dumas not quite up there with Sacred Life or True Valor, but I think Mr. Dumas can close. Uh, he showed he could close in the Bernard Baruch closing into that slow pace. Again, um, you know, and as as I look through this more, I realize that his closing his closing projection uh, doesn't compare with much of the field. So just pretend I didn't say that. I'm including this one because it's Mike Maker. Um, and because I, I thought the effort in the Bernard Baruch was was pretty solid. So, you know, adding him in there, going four deep, doesn't increase the cost of the ticket by that much. I mean, I guess it's, what would that be from three to four? It would be about a 33% increase in the cost. And then we go to race four, 14 rather, race 14, race five in the sequence, the Kentucky Derby. And I thought about a lot of things here. I thought about singling Tis the Law, but then I went back and included other horses and had to make cuts elsewhere. So we went five deep in here. Fierce, we know, is scratched. I'm using Storm the Court. Uh, I've written about him on Lone Speed. I've talked about him. I, I think, you know, on paper, it looks like he hasn't progressed that much this year. But I think you can make some excuses. I think he's going to like him out a quarter. I think he's going to get a good trip. I'm going to use him for sure. Um, money moves, okay? I've talked about this one a lot. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that that 98 buyer speed figure isn't legitimate. And I hope I don't screw up the screen recording here by doing this. But if we go back and look at the chart from his last race, which is the Saratoga race where he lost to Prioritize, who is in the uh, the grade one at a mile and a quarter at Saratoga on Saturday. And we look at the buyer speed figures that were earned that day and how they compared to what those horses had done in the past. Prioritize ran a 99. So that, that's a career, that was a career best. For him, a five-point jump off the last and not totally unreasonable. Money moves, an eight-point jump off a long layoff. Locally owned, that 95 is a career best. In fact, I think it's a career best by, you know, by eight full points. And some of the horses that have run back have not run back to the buyers they earned that day. So I'm not saying that I think the buyer is wrong. I'm saying it's, I'm a little bit curious as to what some of the, 
maybe some smarter handicappers, people who really pay attention to, to speed figures. And I pay attention to them a little bit. They're not the be all end all. But I just think it's interesting what some of these horses uh, had run before and what they came back and ran uh, in their in their subsequent starts or the, the, in, in the race in question. There were some 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 big buyers earned that day. Nevertheless, I think money moves is interesting. I've talked about it. I don't think Pletcher's one to throw an almost million dollar auction purchase to the Wolves unless he thought that horse was ready, especially when he's got other three year olds like Dr. Post who could have run in here. So I included money moves, um, moving down through the field, some good horses I'm leaving off. I've talked about attachment rate. I just think watching the replays of his previous races, especially the last two, I think there are reasons to believe that he's uh, he's going to take a step forward and that he'll like a mile and a quarter. Uh, yes, he's got one career win. I don't love that, but um, attachment rate is definitely one that I'm going to be using here. I've just been talking about him so much. And then the big two, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, what if I catch a bomb in uh, one of the early legs and then I, you know, I, I don't have tis the law on my ticket. And believe me, there was a scenario where I was just going to use my long shots in here and, uh, d- you know, decided that, uh, that that just was a really dumb idea. So five deep in here, tis the law, honor AP, attachment rate, money moves, and storm the court. That comes out to, I believe if my math is correct, 720 combinations. You play it for 50 cents. It costs you $360. Yeah, I mean, it's not a cheap ticket, but this is a big day and a lot of money in the pool. There's a chance if you hook up the right long shots um, with maybe some of the right logical horses that you didn't exclude, this could pay a lot of money. You got to take a swing. I'm taking a swing myself. Best of luck. And uh, don't forget to show me your PPs next time too. Later.